this country and obey uh, our, our leaders and go out and put their life on the line for all of us that we could have the freedom that we do. And, and all of us have a lot to be thankful just in that respect as we walk into Thanksgiving this year that we can enjoy the freedom that they've been protecting for us. Amen? Hallelujah. So I'm going to start today, you know, this is my Veterans Day joke. All right, so laugh politely when I'm done, okay? Okay. All right. General McKenzie was in charge of the Navy, and he was visited, visiting his colleague, General Marshall, who was in charge of the Army. And McKenzie arrived at the military camp and was greeted by Marshall. They both walked around the place, and McKenzie asked, so how are your men? Very well trained said General McKenzie. I hope so. You see, my men over at the Navy are so well trained, you can see they're the bravest men all over the country. Well, my men are very brave, too. He said, I'd like to see that. So Marshall calls Private Cooper and says, Private Johnson, I want you to stop that tank coming here with your body. He looks at him and he says, are you crazy? It didn't kill me, you idiot. I'm out of here. As Private Johnson ran away, Marshall turned to a bewildered Recanti and said, You see, you have to be pretty brave to talk to a general like that. <laughs> All right. All right. Okay. I had to try. All right. Okay. All right. So today what we're going to be talking about is the supernatural power of God's love. All right? My question for the, today is this. Has your life been lacking the joy of knowing and experiencing a living relationship with the living God? I'm not asking for a raise of hands, but that's the question to ponder. Am I, am I getting closer? Am I, am I experiencing the relationship that God desires for me to have? That closeness in his presence, amen? So our first scripture today Amen, if we can get it back, amen, is uh, Romans 8.38, amen, and it says, and it was great that we were singing about this in worship, because it's, uh, you know, the love of God, for I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation, will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. That is an amazing promise of God for all of us that believe. Amen? More than anything else, I, I, I was feeling the need to just testify to each one of you today of, of how awesome my God has really been to me. Because I was drawn unto him in a time of desperation. In a time when I was broken, in a time when there was nowhere else to turn, like so many of you, God was there. He was waiting. He said, I'm here for you. All I had to do was call on the name of Jesus, and he came. Amen? Amen. Amen. In that time of brokenness, all you got to do is believe. All you got to do is believe. That's one of the, the most, have faith, amen, and believe that the word of God is true. Hallelujah. The fact that the creator of the universe would care about us, the creator of the universe with all the things that he has to think about, all the situations that he's dealing with, all the prayers that are being called out to him, he's thinking about you. He cares about you. Amen? That is awesome to me. That he would be concerned for my well-being. That he wanted to call me friend. Amen. I remember the first time I walked in the bread of life about 12 years ago. Maybe not the first time, but soon after they were singing a song, he calls me friend. And I was amazed that Jesus would call me friend. I was came in here, I was... I was a mess when I walked in here. I'm still a mess in a lot of aspects. God's working on me still. Thank you, Jesus. But I will tell you what. I'll tell you what. When I heard that song, Jesus calls me friend. Tears just began rolling down my face. To think that you would call me friend. Someone who had not even lived any way near accordingly to what he had wanted me to do in my life up to that point. 
He called me a friend. That's an awesome thing from God. Amen? Amen. That he wanted to spend time with me. It was mind-blowing to me. The Bible says that Christ proved his supernatural love for us by coming to die for us all while we were still yet sinners. While we were still yet walking in darkness and drenched in decadence and sin, with all the sin in our life, he laid his life down for us out of love, Amen. out of a godly love for you and for me. Amen. Amen. While we were still walking with the enemy, he loved us. That still blows my mind. He tells us to love your enemy. Well, he showed us what that means. When he laid down for our sins while we were still out there sinning, while we were still out there doing our thing, he, was, he had died for us. He laid his life down. There's no greater love than that. Amen? Amen. The Lord's great agape love drawed me to him like a moth to a flame and caused me to want to please him. And fully surrender myself to him. Amen? And to love him with all my heart, mind, and soul. He showed me how to love. You know, God is such a, a beautiful God. He shows us how to love. He deposits love in our hearts. And then he creates opportunities around us to be able to use it, to exercise it. For it to become stronger, for it to go from a, a, a natural love, which is what we always knew, to a supernatural agape love of God, from God, in us, to extend to the people around us. It's an amazing thing, amen? To learn how to love again, to learn how to care again, to learn how to believe again and have hope again. God deposits it in us, amen? And it's a beautiful thing, and it blows my mind. Amen? As we so surrender to him and we kneel down before him and we say, Lord, do it be what thou wilt. I am yours. There's not, not holding anything back, Lord, I give you it all. Amen? He says, yes. He simply says, yes. And what I love in the Bible where it says, and your sins were as far from him as the east is from the west. He forgets now. He sees newness. He sees beauty. He sees glory in you. Amen? He sees his son in you. God isn't looking at your sin. He's looking at your spirit. Amen? He's looking at your spirit. He's looking at who you are in him. Amen? And he sees light. He sees the light in you. Amen? Hallelujah. We're all works in progress. None of us have it right yet. I don't care how long we've been around. There's things we have to work on. Amen? And that's why the Bible tells us to remain teachable. Amen? Because when we think we got it all down, we got it all right, and we know it all, we got some work to do. Amen? The first thing we need to do is get rid of some pride in our life and get some humility. Amen? Hallelujah. I'll tell you what, I went to a Bible study this week. It was a wonderful Bible study done by Alberto and Nida. They did a great job. Amen. And I went there to learn them and to learn from them and to see what God had for me in the Word. Amen. And it was a beautiful thing. Amen. Hallelujah. If you're not going to a Bible study, go find one and go to one. Amen. Hallelujah. They got a great one. Amen. I don't know if they could fit everybody in that house, but somebody else just have to open up their house. Amen? Amen. See Pastor Frank about that. Amen? <laughs> so the taught me how to love with an agape force love. Amen? Agape love is a powerful love. It's a forceful love. It's a thrustful love. It's a love that penetrates through darkness. Amen? It's a love that changes people when it touches them. Amen? It changes situations, delivers people. Amen? A godly force love. It's a powerful love. And because you have God in you, you all have that powerful, forceful love that, that God gave us. That a godly force love is part of you. It's part of your spiritual DNA. Amen? Hallelujah. Amen. Everyone was going to come up here and, and pray for me, so I just want to tell you I'm sorry I forgot. It. I thank you for your obedience, amen, and same to you, amen. Hallelujah. 
That's why I know I didn't forget. I just remembered about it. <laughs> All right? <laughs> so God we love does a lot for us. It promotes love in our lives. It promotes forgiveness in our lives for those that have hurt us or harmed us or do things against us. Amen? It's the very character of the heart of God. Amen? His love is deeper than ours. Amen? It's deeper. And we want to go deeper. Deep calls to deep. He's calling you in and saying, come, amen? amen? For we are people that look and seek out those deep things in the word of God. So it's what it is, is it's God's calling out to you to come and enter into that deepness with him, amen, that you can have relationship, that you can have communion with God, amen? Deeper, going deeper into those places where God says, here, I may reveal this new mystery to you or that new mystery to you. I'm going to unfold or take off another skin off the onion. Here it is, amen? So I'm convinced that all it takes, even though there's enough, God's love is deeper than any ocean there is, amen, that it only takes one little teeny drop of love upon a person. To change their lives forever. And when you love others, and you love your enemies, or you love your neighbors, you love your friends, employees, you love the people in your church, it's like depositing that drop of love upon them. And when that drop of love comes upon them, it changes them. Amen? Hallelujah. God is so good. Amen? One drop, and you're supernaturally changed. Amen? A supernaturally changed life Amen. for all of eternity. Because eternity starts now for the believer. It started when you received, received Christ. Amen. Amen. In your life. Eternity began. You don't have to die to start living in the eternal life. Amen. Because right now it's never going to end in your Holy Spirit that's been deposited in you. Right? So you already got one foot in heaven. Hallelujah. Heaven is coming down. Amen? The kingdom come, thy will be done. It's came. It's in you. It's part of you. Amen? Part of the Lord God who sits on the right hand side of the Father is not only there, but it's within you. Amen? And you are with him. Amen? Hallelujah. So you've got one foot in heaven and one foot in the world. Amen? Hallelujah. You have to just make a decision which one you want to serve. Amen? Hallelujah. For me, it's I want to serve the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. God, and he's drawing you in with his love. Amen. He's drawing you in with the joy and the peace and the comfort and all these wonderful things we think of when we think of heaven. Amen. When we, we say we're thankful that our loved ones who have departed us are already enjoying that know Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. God is so good. And really, because we live in this country, on top of it, since it's veterans, they ought to say, because of our freedom, we're able to go out and proclaim that in the street corners, amen? Without fear of being of recompense, amen? Of being stoned or shot or, or killed or, 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 or hurt in some way. Financially, whatever it is, there's is so much to be thankful for. Think of it. Christ's forgiveness is so great and compassionate that he will not allow anything or anyone to condemn us or separate us from his supernatural love. Romans 8.1 says this. It says, There, therefore, is no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. There is no condemnation for those that are in Christ That they're living for Jesus, amen? Mm -hmm. Ephesians tells us for where the people are around you, where they're at today. Yes. Amen? Focus on the, the lovely and the good and the pure, amen? Take our focus off of, of the darkness or the, or the blemish, amen? Yes. Hallelujah, God will deal with it, amen? Yes. But I'll tell you what, there's no condemnation, so as believers, we don't need to be condemning. We don't need to try to be the judge. Amen? That job's taken, hallelujah, by someone much smarter, wiser, and higher, and deeper than we could ever be. Amen? Hallelujah. One drop is all it takes, and they're renewed. 
Amen. They're not kept in a state of sin. Kept in a state where people can look at them and say, ah, oh, look at that. Look what they did. That's, that's, that's just wrong, if you ask me. Amen. Amen. That's not the way to live a life. That's not the way. Look at what's good about people. Amen. Amen. Look at the light in them. Look at, look at for what they've done good. How they're serving God. Amen. There's so many out there that are doing nothing. Not even trying. Let's be happy for the people in our family that are trying. Amen. Hallelujah. Lift them up and encourage them. Amen. God is so good. Amen. He wants you to be good too. Amen. Hallelujah. Even though he's holy, blameless, unstained, separated from sinners and exalted above the heavens, he still knows his job to love and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen? He gives us absolute assurance of that. Amen? In Romans chapter 8, verses 38 and 39, says this, For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor principalities, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation, will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That we can start doing. Amen. That we can make mistakes and God can forgive us. Amen. That we do have things to work on. Amen. And that we have brothers and sisters that will extend a hand to help to get us up. Amen. Praise Jesus for that. Amen. Hallelujah. It is God's love that enables us to go from walking on our lives in the natural to walk around our lives by flowing in the supernatural, by moving in our spiritual gifts, amen, and observing the effects of those gifts on others as they manifest themselves around us all the time. Amen. Keep your spiritual eyes open. There's things happening around you that you need to rejoice about, amen, that you need to be thankful about, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God is so good. Amen. In Mark 16, 19, it, it goes on. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, let's start in 15, 18. Amen. In Mark 16, 15 through 18, it says this. And he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. But he who does not believe will be condemned. That's who will be condemned. Those that do not believe. Amen. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Amen. Woo! That is some good stuff right now. Amen. 
Hallelujah. I talk it all the time. Amen. Do you guys hear me? I talk it all the time. Amen. I'm going to tell you something that happened at my work just last week. Amen. I shared it uh, at Intercessory Prayer uh, Monday. Was it Monday? No, Wednesday. It was awesome, by the way. Come to Intercessory Prayer if you have the opportunity. First Wednesday of every month at 7 o'clock. Amen. But I will tell you, a guy came to me after work. Came to me after work. And he says, I need to talk to you. He said, no, I'm a pastor. Okay. So he pulls off his hat. And he shows me that there's a, something growing on his head. It was like brownish green. And he says to me, he says, I got cancer. It's in my brain and it's eating through my skull and it's starting to come out. Whoa. I never saw what cancer looked like, but I saw it that day because there it was. And I was standing there with my supervisor and him. And I, I said, well, I got to pray for you, brother. He goes, I was hoping you would. No, no. There's a reason why I told you this, right? I just tell you and not expect you to pray, right? So I walk over and I lay hands on him. All right? Now, I, I take it a little easier at work. Unless God says do something, then I do it. I don't care where I am. Fire me if you have to. I'm going to follow what God tells me to do. Amen? So I lay my hands on him, and the supervisor goes, are you kidding? I go, no. He goes, walks over, he lays hands on him. Oh, my God. There we are. That's all right. Now we're talking, okay? So we prayed that he be healed. And then it not be cancer. Amen? She came up to me two days later and told me, went to see the doctor the next day, and the doctor told him, it's now benign. Amen? Amen? Amen. Hallelujah! I'm telling you, God can do it. God can do it. Amen? God can do it. And he'll use your hands to do it. Amen? He'll use your faith to do it. Amen? I didn't expect any of that. All I knew was God said, lay your hands on him, and I just did. Amen? Amen. Praise God. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, yes. that man, when he was told he had cancer, same doctor who sent him, I don't know how this is, but it's now benign. Amen? Amen. Woo! God is good. Supernatural signs, wonders, and miracles following us everywhere we go. Amen? All the time. Really, it's just about how often you allow yourself to let the Holy Spirit work through you. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. It's so good. It's so good. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. He's so good. Hallelujah. You know, if you want to move in the supernatural power God has for you, know that it's about getting intimate. you got to get intimate with God. You gotta get before God, amen? You, you have to recognize who you are in Christ Jesus, amen? You gotta realize I'm just not the average Joe walking down the street, amen? I'm a kingdom believer, I'm a child of God. I have the Holy Spirit in me, spiritual gifts in me. My, the word that's been deposited in my heart has power, amen? Hallelujah. My Bible tells me they will lay their hands on the sick and they will recover, amen? God saved me. The Bible, amen? Yes. Hallelujah. So I get excited when I talk about that, amen? amen. We need to get excited. These are exciting times, yes. amen? Hallelujah. God is so good. So if anyone in the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 17, 19, familiar to all you Bible scholars I know, I'm going to read it anyway. It says this. I'm in a different version, I think, but I'm going to read what I got. Okay? All right. Amen. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Yeah. All things have passed away. Behold, all things are new. Hallelujah. Amen. Behold, all things are new. Yeah. Amen. Yes. Now, all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ. Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Yeah. Reconciling people yeah. to the mindset that God loves them, wants to be with them, wants to work through them, that he loves them and loves their family, loves their friends, and loves to see what they're doing as they activate their faith. Amen? Yeah. Spiritual yeah. activation. Amen. Of our faith. Amen? Going forth and doing something 
something with what God has deposited in you. Amen? But you got to get intimate. you got to get closer. you got to try to go deeper. you got to spend time in prayer. you got to say, Lord, I'm here before you. I'm naked and I'm poor. I, I'm bare before you, oh, Father God. Nothing I have is worthy of coming to you before you. In any way, coming in humility and saying, God, move in my life. Just touch me for a moment, speaking to my ear. Amen? And when you do that, let me tell you what. He comes. He said, I was already there. Thank you for asking. Amen? <clears throat> Hallelujah. Do not be afraid of the Holy Spirit. No fear. Amen? Amen. Courage. Amen? Wherever you go, no matter what it is. I know that when I travel, uh, I have probably not going to do any for a while, but as I have traveled, because I move in, in God's kingdom, I don't get to stop doing what God has me do in South Buffalo. Amen. When I go to, if I go to Tampa, I'm going to pray for people to get healed. Amen. I'm going to evangelize when the time comes up. I'm going to find a church and I'm going to go to it. Amen? Amen. And if somebody tells me there's a Bible study, I'm going to go to that too. Amen? Because I'm the same here as I am there and everywhere else. Amen? Hell this. So God has opportunities for you everywhere, all the time. Amen? And the world, the world is crying out for something more than what they see on TV. Amen? They're looking for something, anything. Please, give me something better. Show me something better. Show me how to get it. Amen? Hallelujah. You got the best self-help book you could ever have right here, amen? The Holy Bible, amen? There's no better help than anyone can get than that, amen? Hallelujah. Open it up and show them what it says in the Word. Tuesday I was at, uh, was it Tuesday? Thursday I was at uh, South Hill, or South Hill, that was the name of where my church was in Virginia, but South Park High School. And I went there for a Bible study, Amen. And so I go there, I don't know what to expect, I don't know what's going to happen, I, I have no expectation, only that I'm doing what God told me to do. So I go there, and I'm in this room, and they send me to a room with a guy who's teaching Spanish, a guy who, a woman who's got a food pantry, and a guy who's just watching the room. I'm like, okay, here we go, all right, so how y'all doing, you know? I'm going to pray, and I, if any of you would like to join me, please do, but I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray for the school, I'm going to pray for you, I'm going to pray for the kids here. And they did, they, one person left, that's okay, maybe they'll come back next week. And the other one stayed, we prayed, amen? So then I'm like, okay, Lord, not a Bible study with me, but I'm like, you got to show me what to talk about. So it turned out the guy was a Catholic, uh, did Catholic communion. Right? You know, like when we do communion, we got some word to talk about when we do communion, right? We're going to say something out of the Holy Bible when we're going to do communion. You just saw that. I said to him, I said, would you like to talk communion in the Bible? Yeah. I said, do you know any of the scriptures from the Bible about communion? No, I don't really read that. I said, oh. Well, if you'd like to, I could read them to you. So we, I read them out of the Bible. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 through 30, which is communion. Amen? The Last Supper. And he was like, wow, really? I heard that before. That's where it is. I'm going to use that. Amen? So, so in that, something happened. Amen? And we began to talk and we began to share. Amen? And he said he'd be back next week. Amen? So that's a good thing. Amen? It's one step at a time. Amen? A lot of us look to walk into ministry or walk into a situation where it's already done. It's already huge. It's already big. Amen? We got to start small a lot of times and just yeah. begin getting it going. Amen? And get it rolling. Amen? And let the people warm up to it. And then it starts to grow. Amen? Amen? That's my experience. Amen? In ministry and uh, starting churches and that kind of thing in that you got to be willing to start small. Remember, Pastor Frank, before I left and went to Virginia, he told me this, don't despise small beginnings. All right? And I went, well, okay. Now many times I heard that in my head? 
over the next 10 years. I remember that Pastor Frank telling me, don't despise small beginnings. Boy, was he right. Amen? Amen? I'll tell you. So the world is crying out. People seek satisfaction for their souls through many things. Alcohol, drugs, sex, uh, whatever, gambling. They go for it, amen? They want to feel good in the flesh, amen? So that's what they do, right? I'm telling you, if you want to feel good, you need to get God in your life and let the Holy Spirit move on you, amen? If you're going to find a happiness and a joy that you ain't never going to find in a joint, you're ever going to find in a needle, you're ain't never going to find it in a bottle, you're never going to find it on TV or in a movie. I'm telling you that God has everything you need for you, amen, and more, amen, than you can have He says, come on, let's run for the prize together. Yeah. Amen. Because the Bible tells you to run for the prize. Amen. But I'm here to tell you, God's hand in hand with you the whole way. Yeah. He's running right alongside you as you're running for that prize. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. And when you get tired, you get tired, it goes, come on. Here's a second win. Have you ever experienced a second win? Yeah. When you run out of doing an exercise, you also get the second win. God, I'm telling you, Go. So I'd like to breathe again. Hallelujah. Amen. God is good. He's with you the whole way. Amen. And he'll never leave you nor forsake you. Have you guys heard that one before? God will never leave you nor forsake you. Praise God. He is so good. So what do you do with all this stuff? Amen. First of all, you say, man, I want it. I remember when I first started going to Bible studies. And people would say, what spiritual gift do you have? What spirit do we people would share? And I would go, well, what do you want, Mark? I want them all. Yeah. They say, you want them all? Yeah. Well, Mark, you know, you're, I don't know about lots. God didn't say I couldn't have them all. I want every single one of them. And my hallelujah, pour them out on me. Let me see what I can do for you, Lord. Give me as much as you can, quickly, so I can get to work. Amen? And God will do it. God will give it to you. God will pour it out on you. And you get excited because you have something in you that the whole world needs, amen? And it's called Jesus. It's called the Holy Spirit. It's called God, amen? And supernatural things will start flowing straight from you, straight to them, right straight from the heart of God, amen? Right straight from the heart of God, amen? Onto their heart, amen? And their lives will be changed. Woo! God is so good. Yeah. There's somebody in hospice right now who's getting ready to take their last breath. I just pray there's somebody with them right now talking to them about Jesus. Oh, yeah. Amen. Because yeah. they're going to receive, amen, when the times get to the end, amen. I've seen it many times. Right when they're in their last moment, right as you go to visit them in the hospital and they haven't received the Lord yet, amen. Hallelujah. And you say, Lord, give me the right word. Holy Spirit talk through me. And they received the Lord as their Savior, and then their eternity has been changed. Through right from the heart of God, right through your lips, right to their heart, and then straight to heaven through that. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. God is good. God is good. Amen. John 4:48 4, said, Unless you people see signs and wonders, you will by no means believe. We gotta get out there, folks. Yeah. We gotta allow God to use us. Share your faith, amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Share your faith, share your spirit, encourage others, fill them up, amen. Take advantage of every opportunity that God has for you. Amen. Yeah. When deep cries out to deep, jump in the water. Yeah. Jump in. Oh, yeah. Jump in. Paddle down. Amen. And go deep. God has beautiful things for you. Yeah. Lovely things for you, your children, your grandchildren. You know, we're so responsible for our children and grandchildren. I have a grandchild, his name's Chase. Man, I talk to him about the Lord. Man, I want him to know Jesus. Amen. I want him to know Jesus. And I don't want to be up in heaven one day and see him in that other line, that broad road leading to the path of destruction. 
I want to see him coming in, amen. And I want to hear God say to my grandson, well done, my good and faithful servant. We got a job to do, raising children, raising the young, bringing them up, amen. Have all you people have so much to offer the young people in this world. So much, amen. So much in testimony, just in your testimonies of what you've done, what God has done through you, I should say. Amen? Amen. You got to just believe that there's power in your testimony. Amen? We yeah. overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the Word. Yeah. Right, exactly. Amen? Bring that testimony out. Share it. Amen? And watch supernatural things happen in your family. Man, I'm telling you, church. I just want to encourage you today. Amen? To go deeper. To get more intimate with God. To walk in the glory of God. Amen. To walk with God. To, to lay your head against his chest. To hear his heartbeat. To feel his breath upon your neck. To know that when you're praying that he's there. When you're eating he's there. When you're driving he's there. Amen. Because he wants to be with you probably more truthfully than you want to be with him. Because he'll never leave you. Amen. He'll never leave you. Amen. Say hi to him when you wake up. Sometimes I wake up, I just go, hi, Jesus. I know you're there. Amen. And then before I get into prayer, because I didn't think, just say hi. Say hi, Lord, as you're walking down the street. Say it you're walking into the supermarket. Hi, God, I know you're with me. Praise God. I just want to know this. Hallelujah. So, Today, yep. amen. Give God your best, amen. amen. Give God your worship, amen. Give God your best, amen. Every day, give God your best when you pray. Pray with fire in your prayer, amen. 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 Pray a fervent prayer, and that's an effectual prayer when you put fire in it, amen. That's the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. God is so good. Amen. I love you guys. Probably next week I'll be back in Kate Zone. Amen. Uh, my wife, Pastor Donna, has been over there for months. We didn't split up. She's in Kate Zone. Amen. <laughs> and we're building up the, the a children's church for the kids. Amen. All right. It starts at 10 o'clock every single Sunday. Bring your kids to church. Bring your grandkids to church. Seven dogs. We'll love them. Amen. God bless y'all.